Hey, it's Janine Driver. Hey, wait a minute, are you currently watching this video while I'm still in your audience speaking on stage? Pay attention to me on stage. Watch this later. What would be different in your life today if you were to discover that a good deal of anger is actually something completely different than anger? And you're like most people, you're responding to perceived anger with actual anger. That's like feeding a baby a bottle because he's crying, but the actual reason the baby is crying is because he has a dirty diaper. You just made the situation worse. Imagine what would be possible if you could decode what someone's anger was really covering up and what your own anger is really hiding. Imagine what would be possible in your life if you were able to build stronger and healthier relationships with the people in your life simply by decoding the secrets behind anger. Imagine feeling in control of any tough situation you're faced with. Here's the deal. Fear often shows up as anger. Fear is a fundamental, deeply wired reaction inside of us. It keeps us safe from perceived threats. And like humans, animals experience fear. Small fish swim away from big fish. A turtle hides in his shell when he experiences fear. Antelope run at the sight of a lion. What I want you to do here is watch this video of a dog. What happens when the dog experiences fear? Then I'm gonna show you two more videos of O.J. Simpson. O.J. was asked, did he own Bruno Magli shoes? This is significant because there was a Bruno Magli footprint at the scene of the crime. Now, the second O.J. video I'm gonna show you is gonna be completely different. The first one, he says, I never owned those ugly ass shoes. The second video, you're gonna see massive fear, just like you're gonna see in the dog in this first video I'm gonna play. I don't know if you saw this going around on the internet. This is a dog cake. I want you to watch the real dog that watches the cake dog and tell me what emotion is this? <laughs> what, what emotion is that? That's fear, right? Remember this guy? Got away with murder? O.J. Simpson, I'm gonna show you two videos. The first video is gonna be O.J. talking about Bruno Magli's shoes. And the reason these shoes are significant is at the scene of the crime, there was a bloody, there was a footprint of Bruno Magli's shoes at the scene of the crime. In the first clip, O.J.'s gonna say, I never own Bruno Magli's shoes. Those are ugly ass shoes. I would never own those shoes. They're ugly ass shoes. I would never own them. I just don't like them. I want you to notice his eyes in the first clip versus the second clip. In the second clip, OJ is going to be shown a picture of himself. It's so fun to watch because he is walking on the football field and dressed in a suit. And what kind of shoes do you think's on OJ? Bruno Magli shoes. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly. So watch what happens. This is the part I want you to pay attention to. He's going to be looking down. And then when he looks up at the camera, I want you to notice the whites of his eyes. In law enforcement, we call this the three whites. When you are talking to someone and they show three whites of their eyes, this is fear. OJ is gonna show us four whites. Four whites of his eyes. Watch the first video and then the second. If Bruno Magley makes shoes that look like the shoes they had in court that's involved in this case, I would've never worn those ugly ass shoes. You thought they, those were ugly ass shoes? Yes. Why were they ugly ass shoes? Because in my mind they were. What about them was ugly, Mr. Simpson? The look of the style of what, what about the style? I don't know they were ugly to me. Aesthetically, I felt that they were ugly, and I guess beauty is an eye of the beholder, and to me they were ugly shoes. But then, your view looking at exhibit one, correct? It appears to be, yes. Okay. And the jacket you're wearing, could you describe it? No. Do you remember owning that jacket? No. Remember wearing that jacket. Did you see him? No. Why should you care about these emotions, you may be thinking in your head. Excuse me, Janine. Why should we care about these emotions? You should care because body language shows up up to five seconds before someone thinks it. So we can see how someone feels before their brain is registering how they feel. Did you ever tell someone something and you could tell they're angry before they know they're angry? Hey, listen, I just want to let you know I can't come to Thanksgiving again this year. 
And you're like, yeah, not a problem. Not a problem. Your lips disappear and your friend goes, are you angry? I could tell you're angry. I'm so sorry. There's nothing I could do. I could tell you're angry. They're like, no, no, I'm not angry. No, no. And then like four seconds later, they're like, you're damn right I'm angry. You did, right? We see it before they think it because body language shows up up to five seconds before our brain registers it. Now, my son Angus, I told you about Angus, he has learning differences. And when Charlie and Jack were babies, I travel a lot and I was gone for about nine days or so. And I came home and Angus was at a baseball game up here at the Nationals with my husband, Leif. I live, or we all live in Alexandria, Virginia, outside of Old Town area. And it's about 8.30, 9 o'clock at night, and in comes Angus. And I'm so excited to see him. Charlie and Jack are in bed, and Angus comes up the stairs. We have a split-level house if we were to visit. And he comes up the stairs. I'm like, Angus! And he went in his room and slammed the door. Now, I don't know if you grew up in the 70s and 80s like me, but my parents had a policy, such a fun policy, called I'll solve that problem. Do you have that, do you have that policy? Yeah, the I'll solve that problem policy? My dad had come home from school, the door would be off the hinges down in his workshop. We'd have to tack up a Wonder Woman sheet. <laughs> Do you ever try knocking on a Wonder Woman sheet? It's like not a lot of privacy when people are coming in. But Maya Angelou used to say, what? When you know better, you do better. And see, what I know is that fear that we see in OJ's face, fear when it shows up in alpha males, any males, alpha females, any males, alpha females, fear when it shows up, it'll often show up as anger. It often shows up at anger. Anger is a secondary emotion for sadness. Anger is a secondary emotion for fear. So I know better. So I didn't go in when Angus walked by and didn't speak and slammed his door. I didn't go in saying, I'll solve that problem. I went in instead, and he has a bunk bed. And I walked over to him, and I, I started rubbing his back. I go, hey, buddy, are you sad? Are you scared? Are you angry? And he went, uh. And I go, buddy, are you sad? Are you scared? Are you, are you angry? You know what Angus did? He burst out crying. And he turned over and he goes, mom, I said I wanted to leave the baseball game early because I knew you were coming home with Charlie and Jack and they go to bed at 8 o'clock and I wanted to see them because you're going on another trip tomorrow. And dad said, I'm trying to trick them. And if I leave now, I can't play with the iPad on the school bus tomorrow. Now, this is a big deal because we live in Alexandria, and Angus comes to D.C., to Georgetown, to go to school, hour and 15 minutes each way. So here's this little kid who wants to play with his iPad. Had you been with me, you would have heard my first words were this. First of all, Angus, I call the shots in this family. Uh, so don't worry about that iPad thing. You can totally use the iPad. And secondly, I have no problem waking up Charlie and Jack because they've been missing you as much of you, as you've been missing them. I can get them back to sleep, buddy. We woke up Charlie and Jack and they all played together for about an hour and I put them back to bed. Look at the difference. Look at the difference. If I went in with perceived anger that I'm seeing from Angus with real anger, I wouldn't have had this amazing conversation with my son. This amazing conversation, he tells me everything, or at least I think he tells me everything, who knows. But we meet other people's anger. I just got off the stage at another woman's event in Florida a couple weeks ago, and a woman came up and said, you just changed my marriage. I said, what? She goes, my husband and I are high school sweethearts. We have three kids together, the youngest is one. She goes, my husband's a bigwig at the New England Patriots. He's a graphic design artist. And about six months ago, he found out he has this disease that his joints can't support his muscles. And so now he's almost like a robot, and he had to quit his job. I was a stay-at-home mother, and I went in, and I'm now an executive assistant. And my husband is yelling at me every day, you work too hard, you're never here, I'm doing it all. And I just asked him to get separated. As much as I love him, I can't be in a marriage where someone is screaming and full of anger. And when I heard you speak, I realized, I don't think it's anger. I think it's fear. I think it's sadness. He lost his significance which is a basic human need for people to feel significant. She goes, as soon as you were done speaking, I called my husband and I said, we're going to turn this marriage around. You're important to me. I'm not walking away. I love you. And her husband burst out crying. Where do we get it wrong? Because no one's ever told us anything different. We see people at work or our clients hang up on us. That's their significance. My mother used to say, hurt people hurt people. 
Hurt people hurt people. So be careful of going in and meeting people at anger when in fact it could be fear or sadness. Investigate a little further. Investigate a little further. I challenge you to take these three steps moving forward. Step one, ask yourself how would you respond differently if you knew that the angry person in front of you is really feeling sad, scared, rejected, powerless, unimportant, accused, guilty, untrustworthy, devalued, or unlovable. Would you respond differently to each of those? Step two, investigate your own anger triggers. Yeah, it's time to investigate yourself. The last time you unleashed your anger towards your kids, your coworker, your boss, your significant other, your mother-in-law, the stranger in the grocery store, your best friend, what was really going on inside of you? When you ask that question, ask it a second time. Wait a minute, what was really going on? Step three, the next time you feel angry, crack your code. Crack the code behind that anger. What is really going on internally for you? When you begin to label it, instead of the emotions taking over, instead of anger taking over, this whole entire, oh my gosh, I'm so angry, I need to survive, I need to keep people away from me. When you begin to label what it really is, now you're driving the car again, because you're operating from the part of your brain, the neocortex, that's driving the vehicle. This is back at homeostasis where we make smarter decisions, where we end up having amazing relationships. We end up having significance. We end up being respected and trusted. And we have deeper, more meaningful relationships with the people in our life. We begin to feel like we matter and they begin to feel like they matter. My name's Janine Driver. I hope you enjoyed this course.